Welcome to Uncover, the show dedicated to exploring what we need to know about God, the enemy, and ourselves to win the war for our destiny. Your host, Dr. Peggy Karlosky, psychologist, writer, and speaker, admits that there's no new truth, only that that hasn't been uncovered. And now, here's your host. Hello and welcome to Uncover. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want to start with just a a quick prayer and asking the Lord's help today. Lord, I'm asking you to help this morning, Father, to speak and work and move into our hearts. Father, you know some of what you want people to hear and be enlightened with, and I thank you for that. Use me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This morning, I I wanted to talk to you about what I believe is one of the most important subjects that we need to deal with, and that is how to encourage ourselves. As many of you know that are listening, um, I'm a psychologist in private practice, and a lot of times when I meet with a session uh, with a client for the very first time, I kind of break the ice by telling them, I know people don't make an appointment with me for what's going good in their lives. I know that they come to me because of struggles, because of hurts, problems, and I I know that that's why they make an appointment, not coming necessarily for coming in to talk about how great their life is. So I expect to deal with, you know, some um some pain. And that kind of breaks the ice, and as I think about that, I think about one of the greatest things I can do with my clients is to help them encourage themselves. Um, so many times I sit and listen to people's stories and I feel how overwhelming their circumstances sometimes are. And some more than others, some more traumatic than others. But over and over, I hear of painful situations. I hear tragedies. I hear of um, some things that were just natural disasters, a tornado that blew their house down, or maybe a terrible diagnosis, or a terrible accident that killed one of their loved ones or maimed them. Many, many times it's involving people hurting other people. And I guess that started from the beginning of the fall. But, you know, in the midst of all that, I think about the popular messages of be a positive person and have a, a a positive attitude and look at the bright side. And and sometimes I hear some of these messages and they seem almost, um, I know this doesn't sound right, but almost offensive to those that are in terrible pain because they seem like they're so surfacy, like, okay, just look at the bright side. Everything's going to be fine. And yet, it doesn't deal with the enormous pain that they may be feeling. I want to to address those of you who are hurting deeply. And I want to assure you that the message that I want to give you today, that I feel like the Lord has laid on my heart, I don't mean it to sound like some pat formula that's just saying, oh, count your blessings and quit thinking of the bad stuff. But there is a truth that there are wonderful, wonderful ways to encourage ourselves in the middle of deep, agonizing pain. Sometimes we have pain that's not as deep. It's just frustrations and living in a fallen world. And we see how um, things aren't fair. And I was talking to someone recently and in the midst of talking about their story, They just automatically went into, but it's not fair. And how many times have parents said to their kids, get over it, life's not fair. But you know what, I thought about that and I thought, I want to somehow validate the pain while also encouraging those hurting not to just stay there. And I want to do that by looking at what the Word tells us about some of what the Word uncovers 
that shows us the way to encourage ourselves. I mean, what is one of the greatest, greatest lessons we can learn in life? How to encourage ourselves. It's a fallen world. We know that. And so we're all going to need to learn how to do that if we're going to live effectively. Some have had horrible tragedies and terrible mistreatings. And I hear them sometimes in my office. And I have this sense of powerlessness over that I can't change their circumstances. I can't make those other people act right. Or I can't take away what someone has done to them. But I also know that the word gives hope. I also know that there really are ways to encourage ourselves. And so those who talk about, look on the bright side, and, and even that song, Count Your Blessings, it really isn't just trivial. It's true. There are ways that we can encourage ourselves because of what the Word tells us. See, I think, I don't know how to encourage those outside of the Word, outside of knowing who God is and what He's promised. I mean, I don't know how to encourage some who are victims of great harm. Instead, I have hope because of what the Lord tells me. And you know, I was thinking about um, some of the stories I've heard, and I can think of my own. I can think of one of the darkest times in my life when I desperately needed encouragement. I was talking to someone just the other day about there's a song that we sing in church sometimes. And there's a line in the song that says, I'm desperate for you. And it sings it over and over. I'm desperate for you. You know, there's times, even though we really all, all are desperate for him, we may not always realize we are. There's times in life that we feel more desperate than others. Desperate for hope. Desperate for someone to show us that God really loves us. Desperate that things are going to get better. And the time in my life that comes to mind is when my daughter was struggling for her life because she had cancer. And my world was just rocked apart. I, I, the, the pain I felt was like none I'd ever had before. And I'd had other painful things. I almost died at 17. And of course, God knew I wasn't going to die. But I mean, I, I went through some things myself. And some of you listening have been horribly mistreated growing up. Some of you have been molested and and raped and 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 harmed and some have had horrendous stories some not so bad but still painful so if you think about what's the most painful time in your lives i want you to listen clearly to what the word gives us as jewels to encourage ourselves when i think about it it's one of the greatest treasures we can give our children we can teach them all kinds of things but one of the greatest things we can teach our children, more than multiplication tables, more than calculus or anything else, is how to encourage themselves in the Lord. They're going to need it. We're going to need it. When I desperately needed it during that time in my life, I kept going over and over and over to Psalms 145. Why? I don't know. I don't even ever remember in that passage. I don't know. I, I assume that God just kind of directed me there. I stumbled upon it. But I would read it over and over about the greatness of God. Because there in that time, it just seemed so hard why God would allow my little toddler to get struck down with cancer. Why? And you know, some of the people that I think need encouraging the most have had such painful things happen and they don't understand why. And even if they're not horrific situations, Sometimes we go, God, why would you allow that person cheating at work to get promoted? Why would you allow that spouse that doesn't give you the time of day to mistreat me so much and them be happy and me be miserable? Or why that person that, that we see doesn't even seem to try to do the right thing, and yet they seem to prosper? Sometimes we look and go, why, God? And that's when we really need truth and encouragement. And I think that so many times when I'm in counseling, when I tell people, I can't change those circumstances. I can't make other people do anything. But I can show you some truths in the word that you can use to encourage yourself.
You know what I've noticed, though? I can't make them, and I can't make you. The only one we have power over is ourself. But if you will take on the quest and be committed that throughout your life, you will always remember to practice encouraging yourself in the Lord and teach those you love to encourage themselves in the Lord. It's one of the greatest endeavors you can commit to. And sometimes we just kind of forget about it. We just stay in our pain and we struggle through it when we have a great avenue to encourage ourselves right there in the Word if we'll glean those truths and use them. And I've had people say, well, yeah, I know those scripture and I put it in my head, but I don't feel it. We have to fight. We have to fight to really get it in our spirit. We have to ask the Lord, God, fill me with your spirit. Make this word that I'm reading come alive to me so that it's powerful when I need encouragement. Because sometimes we can kind of quote that scripture or say it to ourselves, and we're still stuck in our pain. Doesn't mean it's always an automatic. Sometimes we don't give it the same effort. We say, well, it doesn't work. Well, the Bible says that his word is alive. It's powerful. But sometimes we have to fight through our feelings. Sometimes I can feel that despair and I have to keep fighting and fighting in the word till it gets in there because our carnal mind and the enemy tries to keep it from coming alive in us. And some of you listening are in pain right now. And I'm encourage you, fight a good fight. You know when the Bible talks about running your race and fighting a good fight, that also includes fighting to go after encouragement and fighting through your pain. And I want to give you just a few messages today and just a few that you could use in your fight. I first want to tell you that in order to fight, to encourage ourselves, we sometimes so have to be reminded of things that aren't pleasant, but in actuality, I think they help us in our encouraging ourselves. Because many times when painful things happen and we say, if God loves me so much, why would he allow this? It puts a real damper on our attempts to encourage ourselves. So I want to first start and tell you a few truths that we need to be reminded of maybe several times throughout our life. One of them I want to read you comes from Corinthians, the second chapter, and it is verse uh, second Corinthians, the fourth, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, it's not the second chapter, it's second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and the fourth verse. Let me just start with verse 3, though, because it kind of sets it up. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. The part I want you to get a hold of is, listen to this phrase, the God of this age. Do you understand that the Bible tells us, not that he's the true God, but what it's saying is he's the God of this world. The world looks to as God. It's under the sway. And I think it comes even clearer for me when I look in 1 John five nineteen. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. You know, we sometimes flippantly say, oh, well, it's a fallen world. But do we really think what that means? It's under the sway of the evil one. You know what that tells me? Then there's going to be things happen here that even God grieves about. People hurting each other. People lying to each other. People cheating each other. People raping, killing each other. All kinds of atrocities. There's going to be things in the weather that in the original plan wasn't going to happen. Tsunamis. Things that, in fact, I was reading recently in a book and it talked about the way the earth is set up for it to maintain 
There's got to be certain things happen like earthquakes and tsunamis and so forth to keep the climate and to keep it going. But that wasn't in the original plan. We weren't going to be harmed like that. But when you think about life being under the sway of the enemy, look what that means. For us to have free will, people are going to do things that are hurtful. So that's the backdrop. You know, I've talked about that different times on this show. I talked about it last week about expectations of people. But I just think we have to have that in the backdrop when we go on to encourage ourselves. Because we can go back, yes, but that's true. There's going to be painful things happen here. And there's going to be things that God himself is going to allow that grieve him. I believe that. Why? Because let's look at what Psalms 145 says. And remember, that was the one that was my lifeline when my when I was hurting and desperate. Let's read it. Who God really is. Because see, at that time, when I saw horrific suffering, not only in my life, but in other children at Vanderbilt, I needed to be reminded that God is good. He doesn't do hurtful things. Let's listen to it. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness. Do you hear that? Your goodness. And shall sing of your righteousness. Now this is a wonderful verse. I had my kids memorize it. I encourage you memorize it. In your quest to get great and practice it, encouraging yourself, you need a few that you memorize. This is one for me. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. We need that one. Going on, verse 9. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. You know, the enemy would rather us say, he's not good to me, he's not good to all. What about this? This tells us he is good to all, and his mercies are over all his works. The enemy wants to lie to us, but the world is under the sway of the enemy, and in doing so with free will, there's going to be things happen that in God's plan and perfect will in heaven, it wouldn't be that way. Now, I don't have the answers of why he allows everything, but we do know what this says. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you, and they shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. Now listen to this. The Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look expectantly to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth, who will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will also hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. Now some of you, well all of us really, need to be reminded in our quest to encourage ourselves. Number one, regardless of what we see and experience in this life, God is good. His mercy is great. And he is loving. That's what we read in this passage. We read not only that he's majestic and great, but he is loving. We don't understand everything here, but he is good. The other part in our quest to encourage ourselves is we need to be reminded of our future if we choose Christ. If he is our Savior, sometimes we need to be reminded of where we're headed and what's going to happen in life. I'm going to read you in Colossians the second chapter, 13 through 15. And you, being dead in your trespasses 
and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. And if we read on in verse in chapter 3, verse 1, And then you were raised with Christ. Seek, and then you who were raised in Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on things of earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And then this, this is the, the, the icing on the cake. When Christ who is our life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. You know what I want you to think about? What I want to think about is that if we think about the fact that not just right now are our, our, our names being in the, written in the book of life, but that someday we'll be like him. We'll be with him in glory. To me, how do we encourage ourselves? One of the things that I believe over and over and over is that we have to encourage ourselves not only who God is, but we are forgiven and where we're headed. But even still, sometimes we need to be encouraged when we feel the pain of rejection that God loves us. And the reason I say that is many of us start feeling disappointed in people. We feel hurt by others. And in those times, I need to be reminded he would never leave me or forsake me, that he wants well for me. You know, sometimes, just on a, a lighter note, we can be in a situation and think all these bad things going on, and I have to struggle, but I can say, what's going good right now? Right now in this situation, just like that verse, that song, Count Your Blessings, my name's in the book of life. I have the great I am on my side who loves me. That even in circumstances of, this is going to turn around. God's going to intervene. Or just even right now, some situations that we're blessed about. Sometimes all of us can see things in our family that maybe we don't like. Some painful situations or some things going on that shouldn't be going on. And yet we may have to say, yet but, what do I love that's going on? Sometimes we have to fight to look at those things. I just want to encourage you with another passage. And this comes in James. I love the book of James because I think it's so packed full of important messages from the Lord. But in James 5, 7 and 8, Therefore be patient, brother, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Ooh, that's that's encouraging. But in the meantime, even some of the day-to-day -day frustrations that happen, or some of you may be hurting because your children are hurting, and you're wanting to encourage that child. It may be even grade school things that kids make fun of other kids. It may be, you know, your child is, is making some bad decisions, or it may be that your child's in a bad marriage. Sometimes it's not just us. It's people we love. Encourage them in the Lord. Teach them. It's one of the greatest lessons we can learn. And I encourage you. I believe we get better with practice. And sometimes we get discouraged and we might be trying to learn some new feat. It might be uh, golf. It might be trying to learn to type. It might be trying to learn how to needlepoint. Something we're trying to learn and we get frustrated. We say, oh, forget it. I don't want to work so hard at this. This is one of those endeavors you never need to give up. Never. Thank you for listening, and I encourage you to encourage yourself. I look forward to next week on Uncover.